not from above the fire man walk through the fire that's my exhortation to you tonight walk through the fire don't let the enemy steal from you man because that's his whole goal is to steal your joy he wants to steal your joy and tell you that you suck it's not true it's a lie America is rising Christians are rising people of all faiths are rising it's a beautiful thing the left is freaking out. The rhinos are freaking out. They don't know what to do. I want you to hold on. 
please, please hold on. God is moving. God wants to use you in a powerful way. It's just beautiful, man. It sure is. Oops. I have two things on there. It really is. God is there for us. And thank you, Michael, for that encouragement. For those of you wondering who Michael is, Michael's one of my teachers. And uh, he teaches Monday, excuse me, Sunday through Friday, 5.30 a.m. And right now he's in the uh, book of Acts, and, uh, chapter 24. Sunday he'll be joined in with his wife Linda, and they're actually uh, traveling right now. So God bless their travels, and uh, they're going to Georgia. Go hang out with the Dillies. Check his show out on Wednesday, too. We get together for prayer for about 45 minutes or so. A little bit of worship. Praying for the country. Praying for each other. I'm just being, you know, hanging out with, 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 with Jesus. As he says, two or three gathered in my name. And we got two or three here. So Jesus is here. My brother Chris over there on Facebook. Good to see you, bro. Hi, KLPH. Let us praise him, Barlow. Amen. Hey, Draxus. Once again, hey, Boo. And Barrel Horses. And dear husband. Thank you guys for hanging out. So, for those of you interested, this is the program card. We'll see how long this lasts. My intent on this show was to do Monday through Saturday. Things have changed. We'll see where, the, where it goes. But those are my channels, and you can catch, definitely catch all the replays on those channels. Rumble, and Revolver, D-Live, Revolver Live. On Twitter, also known as X, my address is Steven Henniger. My handle is Revolver. On YouTube is Revolver3586 and Steve.Henniger on Facebook. And hey, by the way, if you didn't get a chance to watch today The Profit Club, do it. Hey, Kenny. Magatick. Right on. Great to see you on Facebook. Uh, check out the face cl uh, the Profit Club. It's a, it's, it's a good one, and it gets into uh, praying medic and his shenanigans and his griftings. Pretty cool. Uh, Discerning Truths is uh, Donahue Papa's show. Catch out on Rumble on Twitter, D Live, but really go to the YouTube page. Discerning Truths 534, and he's got a whole bunch of playlists. And you want to go deep and get into those theological things that people question? And yeah, Bill, Bill, straight up about that. Straight out of the word. You'll love it. Check this out. You God is so merciful. God is so unless there is an agreement. The world says I have everything, but you know. And that is a, that I'm, agreement is my surrender to His will. You cannot walk with God and 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 be constantly pulling against God wanting to go your own way or insisting that God come your way. It is not yours to make the terms. God is the one that establishes the terms of our relationship. Can two walk together except they be agreed? 
And the only way you can walk with God is by surrendering to Him as the Lord. God is so merciful, so gracious as He deals with us with our weaknesses, with our failings. And I think that many times we cast God in a bad light thinking that he is just waiting for you to make that first mistake so he can, you know, just really teach you a good lesson now. When in reality he is just slow to anger. He is patient. He's merciful. He deals with us with great patience. And still he weeps, still he laments, how shall I give thee up? Oh, the stubborn love of God just doesn't want to let you go. You may go your own independent way. You may rebel against God. You may be bringing destruction upon yourself because of what you are engaging in. And God just laments. He weeps. He said, how can I give you up? And he keeps reaching out keeps drawing you or seeks to draw you by love. I'm a rich rock star and I have everything, the outside world says I have everything, but you know, inside I'm dead. By that time I had moved back to Bakersfield where we all grew up and my parents were helping me with my daughter. I met some Christians, they invited me to church. I was like, who cares? You know, I'll try it. And the, the pastor starts saying, Jesus is real. He'll come into your life if you invite him in and all the negative stuff can't stay. And I was like, I was listening to him and I was like, I'm gonna try this. I went home with my drugs and I just poured my heart out to God. I said, God, these drugs are gonna kill me and leave my daughter without a dad. Please, if you're real, come into my life, give me a new life. And with a long story short, I just had an encounter with God's love within the next few weeks. And, and uh, man, I just, I felt like Jesus came in and put his arms around me. I didn't see anything, but it was just like, it was a life-changing event. And I felt like I was at home for the first time. He felt at home because God drew him to his presence. And we were created to dwell with God in righteousness. That's why he felt like he was at home. Top of the evening, Brian. Good to see you. Drive safe, brother. Hi, Granny D. Really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. All right, so I'm going to get into the reading now, okay? That's why we're here. We worship the Lord. Hey, if you got prayer requests, I'm happy to pray with you. You can drop them in the chat. You can email me right there, Steve's on base at revolverlive.com. I'm happy to pray with you. Father, we just come before you, Lord, and we just lift up those who are hearing your word, Lord, these testimonies the attributes of your mercy, the attribute of your longing for us, Lord, and your patience and your kindness. Father, we just thank you for that never surrendering hand that reaches out to us and says, you're mine and nothing's going to take you from me. Lord, let your word be that minister to us right now, we pray in Jesus' name. We thank you for being here, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, stop the verse, but it's all right. Going straight to Fanny. All right, let's get to Psalms. Psalms 53 is for the music director, according to... Mahalath and the skill of David. That's a name. The fool 
has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and have committed abominable injustice. There is no one who does good. God has looked down from heaven upon the sons of mankind to see if there is anyone who understands, who seeks after God. Every one of them has turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Have the workers of injustice no knowledge? Who eat up my people like they ate bread and have not called upon God? They were in great fear there, for no fear had been. For God scattered the bones of him who encamped against you. You put them to shame because God had rejected them. Oh, that salvation of Israel will come from Zion when, the, when God restores the fortunes of his people. Jacob shall rejoice. Israel shall be glad. I thought so, Mr. Bono. Thank you, brother. Proverbs chapter 12. One who loves discipline loves knowledge, but one who hates rebuke is stupid. A good person will obtain favor from the Lord, but he will condemn a person who devises evil. A person will not be established by wickedness, but the root of righteousness will not be moved. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband. But she who shames him is like rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are just, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked wait in ambush for blood, but the mouth of the upright will rescue them. The wicked are overthrown and no more. But the house of the righteous will stand and a person will be praised according to his insight. But what a perverse mind will be despised. Better is one who is lightly esteemed and has a servant than one who honors himself and lacks bread. A righteous person has regard for the life of his animal, but even the compassion of the wicked is cruel. One who works his land will have plenty of bread, but one who pursues worthless things lacks sense. The wicked person desires the plunder of evil people, but the root of the righteous yields fruit. An evil person is ensnared by the offenses of his lips, but the righteous will escape from trouble. A person will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his words and the deeds of a person's hands will return to him. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but a person who listens to advice is wise. A fool's anger is known at once, but a prudent person conceals dishonor. One who declares truth tells what is right, but a false witness deceit. There is one who speaks rashly, like he thrust, like the thrust of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips will endure forever, but a lying tongue is only for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. No harm happens to the righteous, but the wicked are filled with trouble. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal faithfully are his delight. A prudent, per excuse me, a prudent person conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness. Still, brother?
Okay, I turned it down again, Craig. I'm trying. I thought it was too quiet, and I, I cranked it up a couple notches. Maybe it went a couple notches too high. Okay, Isaiah 55. You there, everyone who thrusts, come to the waters, and you have no money to come by any. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy. Listen to me carefully and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you according to the faithful mercies shown to David. Behold, I have made a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, that's the point, Craig. You're supposed to rock out. The joyful thing. <laughs> I appreciate it, brother. I hope it's the right volume now. Behold, you will call a nation you do not know, and a nation which does not know you will run to. And a nation which does not know you will run to you, excuse me, because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon his way and the unrighteous person his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him and our God. For he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, and making it produce and sprout, and providing seed to the sower, and bread to the eater so my word will excuse me so my word would be which goes out of my mouth let me read that again so will my word be which goes out of my mouth it will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the purpose for which I sent it for you will go out with joy and be led in peace. The mountains and the hills will break into shouts of joy before you, and the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush, the juniper will come up, and instead of the stinging nettle, the myrtle will come up. And it will be a memorial to the Lord and an everlasting sign which will not be eliminated. All righty. Brought it down again. Just to... I see my levels over there on the mix aren't actually at uh, at center. It's actually quite a, quite low, so that's why it's probably louder in my headphones than it is for you guys. I apologize about that.
Okay, so we were, where were we? We are in the second remark of Charles Finney's Spirit of Prayer. At a revival lectures. A book written in 1835 by the evangelist Charles Finney. And these are some of his lectures on revival. The book is also known by... So he was giving some remarks about the spirit of prayer, and his second one seems like a sermon. It has very, it has, let's see how many pages is it? It's three pages. It's very. <laughs> Finally getting some warm weather here in Bodfish. <laughs> okay, number two. He says the subject of the subject lays open the, the foundation of the difficulty felt by many persons on the subject of the prayer of faith. The the object of the idea of faith and prayer is a belief that we shall receive the very things for which we ask and insist that there can be no foundation of evidence upon which to rest such a, such a belief. In a sermon upon this subject, a writer brings forward this difficulty and presents it in full strength. I have, says he, no evidence that the thing prayed for will be granted until I have prayed in faith because praying in faith is the condition upon which it is promised. And, of course, I cannot claim the promise until I have fulfilled the condition. Now, if the condition is that I am to believe I shall receive the very blessing for which I ask, it is evident that the promise is given upon the performance of an impossible condition, and is, of course, a mere nullity. The promise would amount To just this, you shall have whatsoever you ask upon the condition that you first believe that you shall receive it. Now, I must fulfill the condition before I can claim the promise, but I can have no evidence that I shall receive it until I have believed that I shall receive it. This reduces me to the necessity of believing that I shall receive it before I have any evidence that I shall receive it which is impossible. Pardon me one second. The heat in the room is setting off my allergies. <laughs> okay. The whole force of this objection arises out of the fact that the spirit's influences are entirely overlooked, which he exerts in leading an individual to exercise to the exercise of faith. It has been supposed that the passage in Mark 11, 22-44, with other kindred promises on the subject of the prayer of faith, re relate exclusively to miracles. But suppose this were true, I would ask. What were the apostles to believe when they prayed for a miracle? Were they to believe that the precise miracle would be performed for which they prayed? It is evident that they were. In the verses just alluded to, Christ says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, and it be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Here it is evident that the thing to be, to be believed in, and which they were not to doubt in their heart, was that they should have the very blessing for which they prayed. Now, the objection above stated lies in 
all its force against the kind of faith when praying for the performance of a miracle. It is impossible to believe this is this in praying for any other blessing. It was equally so in praying for a miracle. I might ask, could an apostle believe that the miracle he wrought before he had fulfilled the condition inasmuch as the condition was that he should believe that he should receive that for which he prayed? Either the promise is a nullity and a deception, or there is a possibility of performing the condition. Now, as I have said, the whole difficulty lies in the fact that the Spirit's influences are entirely overlooked, and, th and that the faith which, which is in the operation of God is left out of the question. If the objection is good against praying for any object, it is as good against praying in faith for the performance of a miracle. The fact is that the Spirit of God gives could give evidence on which to believe that any particular miracle would be granted, could lead the mind to a firm reliance upon God and trust that the blessing sought would be obtained. And so, at the present day, he can give the same assurance in praying for any blessing that we need. Praying, in the, praying is the same thing, whether you pray for the conversion of a soul or for a miracle. Faith is the same thing in, in the one case it is, it is, as it is the other. It only terminates on a different object. In the one case, on the conversion of a soul, and in the other, on the performance of a miracle. Nor is faith exercised in the one more than the other without reference to a promise. And a general promise may be with the same property as applied to the conversion of a soul as to the performance of a miracle. And it is equally true in the one case as the other that no man ever prays in faith without being influenced by the Spirit of God. And if the Spirit could lead the mind of an apostle to exercise faith in regard to a miracle, he can lead the mind to another Christian to exercise faith in regard to receiving any other blessing by a reference to the same general promise. Should one ask, when are we, when are we under an obligation to believe that we shall receive the blessing for which we ask? I answer, A. When there is a particular promise specifying the particular blessing as where we pray for the Holy Spirit, this blessing is particularly named in the promise. And here we have evidence. And we are bound to believe whether we have any divine influence or not. Just as sinners are bound to repent whether the Spirit strives with them or not, their obligations resting not upon the Spirit's influences, but upon the powers of the moral agency which they possess. Ooh, that's, that's, I like that. Upon their ability to do their duty. And while it is true that no one, it, while it is true that not one of them ever will repent without the influence of the Spirit. Still, they have the power to do so and are, uh, and are under obligation to do so whether the Spirit strives them or not. So with the Christians, he is bound to believe where he has evidence. And although he never does believe, even when he has an express promise, without the Spirit of God, yet his obligation is to do so Excuse me. Yet his obligation to do so rests upon him, upon his ability to not, upon, and excuse me, and not upon the divine influence. B. 
where God makes a revelation by providence, we are bound to believe in proportion to the clearness of the providential indication and see so where there is a prophecy we are bound also to believe but in neither of these cases do we in fact believe without the spirit of god but where there is neither promise providence nor prophecy on which we are to repose our faith we are under no obligation to believe unless I have shown in this discourse the Spirit gives us evidence by creating desires and by leading us to pray for a particular object. In the case of those promises of a general nature, where we, where we are honestly at a loss to know in what particular cases to apply them, it may be considered rather as our privilege than our duty in many instances to apply them to a particular cases but whenever the spirit of god leads us to apply them to a particular object then it becomes our duty to apply them in this case god explains his own promise and shows how he designed it should be applied our obligation then to make this application and to believe in reference to this particular object remains in full force. Number three, some have supposed that Paul prayed in faith for the removal of a thorn in the flesh and that it was not granted. But they cannot prove that Paul prayed in faith. The presumption is all on the on the other side as I have shown in the former lecture he had neither he had neither promise prophecy or providence nor the Spirit of God to lead him to believe the whole object objection goes on the ground that the Apostle might pray in faith which out being led by the Spirit this is truly a short this is truly a short method of disposing the spirit the spirit's influences in prayer certainly to assume that he prayed in faith is to assume either that he prayed in faith without being led by the spirit or that the spirit of god led him to pray for that which was not according to the will of god i have dwelt the more I have dwelt the more on this subject because I want to have it made so plain that you will be careful not to grieve the Spirit. I want you to have high ideas of the Holy Ghost and feel that nothing good will be done without His influences. No praying or preaching will be of any avail without Him. If Jesus Christ were to come down here and preach to sinners, not one would be converted without the spirit be careful then not to grieve him away by sliding or neglecting his heavenly influence when he invites you to pray number four in praying for an object it is necessary to persevere till you obtain it oh with what eagerness christians sometimes pursue a sinner in their prayers when the Spirit of God has fixed their desires on him. No miser pursuit No miser pursues gold with so fixed a determination. Number five, the fear of being led by the impulses has gone have done great injury, not by not being duly considered a person's mind may be led by an ignis fatus but we do we, but we do wrong if we let the fear of impulses lead us to resist the good impulses of the holy ghost no wonder christians have not the spirit of prayer if they are unwilling to take all to take the trouble to distinguish but will reject or resist the impulses and and all the leadings of invisible agents 
a great deal has been said in the subject of fanaticism that is very unguarded and that causes many minds to reject the leadings of the Spirit of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, Romans 8.14. And it is our duty to try the spirits whether they are of God, John 4.1, 1 John 4.1. 1. We should insist on close scrutiny and an accurate and accurate discrimination. There must be such a thing as being led by the Spirit, and when we are convicted, excuse me, and when we are convinced it is of God, we should be sure to follow, follow on with full confidence that He will not lead us wrong. How much more has He got here? Too much for tonight. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to leave it right there on the reading. Um, we will start back in number six. Lord willing, tomorrow night. I don't have any plans. So, Lord willing, I'll be here. Father, we just come before you, Lord. And we bless you and we thank you. I'm going through the chat here. I feel the same, you know, I, I, I'm blessed by this church family. Um, through California, through Michael, through um, Bill Donahue, and um, I'm blessed by it. There's there's some genuine prayer warriors in it, and I'm 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 thankful, and I'm, I'm thankful for you guys coming and hanging out. And enjoying some of the music and, and going through my my reading it's difficult for me to read out of that book so I'm sorry I'm doing a lot of squinting and refusing the glasses so I do apologize about that but I will be on again tomorrow night Lord willing same time 8 30 p.m. and we'll be going through Isaiah 54 Proverbs 13, I'm sorry, Psalms 54, Proverbs 13, and Isaiah 56. And then we'll try to finish up that. those remarks from Mr. Finney. Have some uh, other music going. I agree with that, Draxus. I, um... certainly don't want to discourage anybody from going to churches I just find this way I don't know I, I like it because it's it's you know it's not an organization of man which always seems to fail it's just grassroots people come together loving the Lord you know, and wanting to understand God's word. And I'm thankful for guys like Bill and Michael who are willing to teach all the way through it. And, and the reading that tonight is that I do at night is basically allow the spirit to minister to us. And hopefully those things align and they seem to with what's going on in the studies and 
I'm thankful for that. God is God is works wondrously. I really want this to continue. We'll see how it goes. Saturday may be the last show for a while. So we'll see what happens. But um uh I, I am I have every intent to try to keep it going, but I have to work through probably the next month or so and trying to figure out how I'm going to achieve that. It might come on at another time. It might be a different approach. We'll see. So God bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'll go out with two more songs, all right? <laughs> 